Hi there. Today we're talking about pushing back food pushers. I'm Stacy Portugal and I'm here with my coaching par partner Sandy Smith and we are the coaches of Lifestyle Masterclass, a weekly group coaching call designed to support women in healthy weight loss and weight maintenance. So I was telling Sandy the story earlier. I have a very, very dear friend. She's really my best friend for many, many years. And she is a food pusher. And I always jokingly say to her that I'm gonna blog about you because anytime we go out to dinner, you know, she's always pushing dessert. She tells me that I'm, I must be deprived because I'm not eating the bread basket. Um, and really, a food pusher can be anyone. They can be a relative, they can be a friend, but knowing how to deal with them is really a, a key to stay on plan and really sticking to your own agenda. Do you agree, Sandy? Yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And I think it's, it's interesting because sometimes we don't even notice when someone is being a food pusher until afterwards and we realize our reaction to them. And so then, like you said, you now know with this girlfriend and you still love her dearly and you still go out and do all these things with her, but you're prepared for what might happen and how you want to handle that. So why don't we share? We have two quick tips for folks on ways that they can handle the food pushers in their life. Absolutely. So the first tip is to really understand their motive. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it's misery loves company. For others, it may just be that they're not aware of what your goals are, or maybe you're in a situation in which you went to someone's house for dinner, and they just worked hard and prepared a lot of food, and I know when I'm in that situation, I always say to my guests, eat, you know, go ahead, eat, because you want to get rid of the food. I made this for you, eat. <laughs> yeah, so your response to them might depend on you know, what their motive is. Right, right. And really understanding that can help you define then what is an appropriate response that will be uh, not only well received by them, because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or put anybody off. You're not trying to make a statement about what's going on or what they're doing. Um, and at the same time, allow them to accept why you're defining that boundary, which is really what you're doing, right? I agree, and I think it's really important that something you just said, that um, we're not trying to judge anyone else when we're doing what's best for us. And I think that's a really important thing that we need to understand in any situation is that we have to make decisions about what's best for us, and that's just the way it is. Exactly. So understanding their motive and also leading with the positive, if their motive is something completely innocent, such as, hey, I cooked dinner and I just want you guys to eat my food, you're gonna lead with the positive in that case. Mm -hmm. So hey, um, I always say to people, I, I always lead with a compliment when I'm in that kind of situation. Oh my gosh, everything looks so beautiful, the food looks amazing. Thank you so much for this beautiful dinner. Like whether or not you're eating it, you have to understand if their motive is because they've worked hard and they're just, they've done something nice for you, be complimentary. Right, right. Just like you would want them to be in the reverse situation. Absolutely. And defining that boundary and, and understanding, do you need to explain to them what's going on? In most cases, you don't. So, you know, you can say, like, like you just said, lead with the positive. Oh, my gosh, this looks amazing. I can't imagine how much time you put, in, put into this or something along those lines without, but I can't eat that. You know, I'm, I, I don't eat rice. There's no anymore. reason to even say that. Like, right. people don't need to hear about anything more than, thank you so much, this looks great. Exactly. And now what if your what if their motive is something a little bit more sinister, like, hey, I'm I'm eating the whole bread basket and I want you to do the same. You know, the misery loves company. What right. is your suggestion for that? 
You know, for me, what I find a lot of times is that I will, then I will get a little more um, resourceful about defining where I'm at. You know, I, I, I'm glad that you feel like you can do that tonight, but last night we had bunko and it was out of control. So today I'm reining things in. You know, I may be a little more specific then and, and push back a little bit harder. Um, Sometimes, you know, you have to decide, am I willing to go a little ways or is this a red light food? And that's a whole nother topic that we can have, but it's really knowing where your boundary is and being very comfortable in understanding. I get it. She wants to dive into that bread basket because she loves these roles and she wants my permission to say it's okay. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, like we just talked about, I'm not going to judge her behavior, but I'm going to make it very clear why I don't want that behavior to rub off on me. Absolutely, and I think that is such a good uh, way to handle it. When someone is coming at you and it's a misery loves company thing, I say it like that, but really it's just that person is diving in and they don't wanna be doing it alone or they wanna have dessert. I always say to them, oh my God, order dessert. I'm gonna sit here with you, I'm gonna get some tea. Right. Or I just say, order it. Right. And I know in my mind I'm not eating it, but I'm right. giving them the permission that they're looking for. Exactly. So basically, the two tips are um, understand their motive, which is going to help you formulate your response. For some people, it's a, a clear boundary. For others, you're going to lead with the positive. Right. And also staying true to your goals. And we covered this just a little bit, but not really allowing somebody else to, to dilute your efforts. Right, right. And I love it when you phrase it that way, Stacey, that idea of you have decided what you want, what you need for your body. And so then how do I stay true to that and follow through so that I can enjoy the event, the meal, the activity, wherever I am, and walk away still feeling good about myself and not defeated by that meal or that event or that activity. Exactly. You have to let go of other people's expectations. Right. So understanding their motive and then staying true to your own goals and letting go of other people's expectations. Right. Quick tips from Lifestyle Masterclass and guys, I hope that you will learn more about us by going on our Facebook page, also called Lifestyle Masterclass. There's a lot more great tips there, and we'll see you in the next video. Sounds good. Bye. Bye-bye.